Hello, my name is Jimmy Vegas and welcome to this, the first in a mini-series of tutorials on how to create an island landscape in Unity 5. Okay, so this tutorial series is aimed at people who are brand new to Unity or are beginners or just want to look at something new. So if you've just picked up Unity from the website and not sure what to do but you fancy creating some sort of landscape uh, by your islands, then this is probably for you. So the first time you open up Unity, you should be presented with a new project window, hopefully it looks something like this. Remember this is Unity 5, so if you have Unity 5 or Unity 5.1, 5.11, 5.2 or whatever, as long as the base is 5, it should look like this. Perhaps if you're in the future and have Unity 6, it may look something similar like this, I'm not entirely sure. So first thing to do is if you name your project and then select the location where you want it to go, Make sure 3D is selected, and don't worry about any asset packages, we'll be importing them at a later date anyway. So then you just need to create a project just there. I've already gone ahead and created the project. As you can see, your Unity window should look at least something very similar to this, if not exactly the same. You'll have two objects in your hierarchy. Now your hierarchy is where you store all your game objects, and by default it does put in these two. A main camera and directional light. So when we create further objects, they will end up in here. This scene view is one we'll be using the most. This is where you can manipulate any objects you uh, develop, any objects you import, any objects you create. They all go within this window. And here, next to a scene, you have game. If you press on this now, it will look like this. It's simply because we don't really have much to play. This is the game scene where you can test your game when you press the play button up here. So for now, click back on scene. Over here is your inspector panel. This is where you can change settings, you can move things, you can change colour, you can generally play around with anything which exists in your scene. So if you click on something else in your hierarchy, you'll notice the options down here change a little. Depending on what you have selected, you can change everything. However, the most basic is transform. These options should pretty much appear on anything we input into the window. This dictates where the position is, the rotation is, and how big or small it actually is. So down here we have the project window and asset window. This is again very similar to the hierarchy up here, but this is where we store all our assets. Assets are basically textures, um, scripts, and materials that we use within the scene. This console is something we won't really play with. It generally gives you uh, a bit of insight and feedback as to what's going on, for example, if something is wrong. So now we have your scene set up like this, nice and clean. The first thing we're going to do to create an island landscape is uh, create a terrain. So if we go to game object, 3D object, and then to terrain here. Now terrain is like a very versatile object within Unity. I'm going to zoom out by using the middle mouse wheel. It is very, very large as you can see. There is a lot to a terrain. You can do different things to it and you can paint it differently according to how you want it to look. So the first thing to do on your terrain is over here, right click and then click on rename. And let's simply rename this as world. We'll be using a lot of the terrain within uh, this mini-series as it can help us in many different ways and give different visualizations of different things. For example, people use it to create a mountain landscape, but we'll be doing sort of the opposite. So firstly, let's select a corner of our terrain. So let's head over here. Now the first thing to look at over here are a few different tools. The first one we'll be using is this just here. This one raises or lowers the terrain. So if you select this tool and then you can select any one of these but I would recommend selecting this one for now, the big circle. Change your brush size, you can slide it to 100, have it as 1, or you can manually enter a number here. So I'm just going to enter the number 30. You'll notice now the blue dot kind of hovers over. So if we click now with the opacity set as 2, 
not a lot really happens. So if you hit Ctrl and Z, it will undo that small little move. However, if you set this to 100, you'll be able to see that when we click it, it kind of raises quite a large bump. It's not very islandy, is it? It looks more like a cliff edge. So best thing to do is hold Ctrl, press Z to undo. So let's set our brush size uh, to, let's say, full. So let's go to 100. And then if we just kind of uh, let's move the camera around using this hand just here. So if you click it and just uh, hold the left mouse button, move it around, get it into a nice position. This button actually selects the object, but we're not going to worry about that for now. We already have it selected when we select the buttons over here. So back on here, I'm just going to shift it slightly to about there so as I can see it a bit better. And I'm going to select this and then make sure that's selected, set to 100, and let's create our first island. Let's click. About here. And if we go here down, and let's change this, let's say, to about 50, I think. No, 75, I think, is better. And click twice here to raise it up. And as you can see, it looks a bit more like a hat rather than an island. So we need to make it look more like an island, as this is an island landscape tutorial, not a hat tutorial. So we need to smooth the edges around here. And that can be done by clicking this icon here, Smooth Height. This will smooth out all those rough edges around, which kind of make it look terrible. So if you select it, and let's go to here, and let's set it to 25 manually with the brush size, and hold down the left mouse button and just drag around all those rough edges there. And going around all those rough edges, you can see it's making it much smoother and making it look much more like a little island rather than a hat. So if you select the hand tool and just change your angle around, if you hold the right, uh, right mouse button down, you can pan the angle which you're looking at. So hold the right, right mouse button down and drag across. You'll see at the back here it needs smoothing. So let's carry on smoothing using the same tool. And you'll notice gradually the whole island appears nice and smooth. So we pan ourselves around again. And we can see we just need to do a little bit more around here. So let's select our tool yet again. And let's just smooth it. OK, so that's starting to look a lot more like an island now. So best thing to do uh, before the next tutorial is to probably create a few more of these. Um, it's up to you how big or how small they are, how tall or how low they are. But bear in mind they have to be above a certain height at least, as when we insert the water later on, it will kind of drown the island a little. So as I say, if you create these, you can have it as smooth as this or if you want a hat island as rough as that it's up to you um, in the next tutorial we're going to be looking at putting in some textures as um, having a white uh, object is, is a bit hard on the eye so we'll put a texture to fill in all around here uh, okay so best thing to do now uh, we could do actually saving this scene um, so if we go to file and go to save scene or you can hold control and press s and input a file name so i'll just call this island it's nice and simple and then hit save and you'll notice down here you've got this unity icon appear with the word island below this is our actual scene so when you open up a project and you can't actually see anything you've built in here you need to open this particular object here this is your scene so in the next episode, as I say, we'll be doing some more uh, on this. We'll be putting in some textures. We'll be bringing in some cust uh, some packages, sorry, to make it look a bit better. And we'll also be putting in our first-person controller so we can see a bit better. So uh, until next episode, um, when we do all of this, uh, thank you very much for watching this one, and I hope it's uh, been educational.